Hello and a warm welcome to all the brilliant minds joining us here at Guild Geekify Programming. I am Saeed Kohansel, your full stack web developer guide. Discover the comprehensive guide to implementing VPN detection on a PHP server. This tutorial provides step by step instructions on VPN detection in PHP using IP Hub API for reliable results. Learn how to safeguard your server by detecting malicious IPs and understand the techniques to identify VPN, proxy, and server IPs on the server side. This video is a must-watch for anyone looking to enhance their server security by learning how to check if a user is using a VPN on a PHP server. Stay ahead of the curve by learning these essential skills today. I will also create a JSON API to retrieve and display user IP information in JSON format. In the final step of this tutorial video, I will test the scripts in a live server environment. Very well. Let's proceed to demonstrate how the program operates. Assume this is my website. When I'm not using a VPN or proxy, I have full access to the site. However, when I use a VPN, I lose access to the site and encounter an error message that I've designed. This is just one of the examples I've designed for blocking clients. As we continue with the video, I will show you more examples. To utilize the IP Hub API, we need to create an account and obtain an API key which we can acquire for free. Please visit the IP Hub website at iphub.info. On the API page, IP Hub provides necessary information such as API simulation, API documentation, explanations, and rules. I will delve into the comprehensive documentation and explain it to you as we proceed. Let's create a new account for yourself. As I already have an account, I will log into mine. Very well, now follow along as I show you step by step how to obtain a free API key from IP Hub. Excellent, we have successfully obtained a free API. Now, I will delve into the IP Hub documentation and provide you with the necessary explanations. Please note that I will include all the necessary links for your convenience in the description. As you can see, this section mentions the return values and capabilities of the IP Hub JSON API. This means that this API returns all the mentioned values to you, and you can use them according to your needs. These values include items such as country name, country code, IP, host name, and so on. Now on to the important part. In this API, there is a JSON key named block that has three possible return values, 0, 1, and 2. The block parameter was carefully designed to allow users to determine their own risk level. IP Hub recommends using this variable when deciding whether to block the queried IP from accessing your application. In this case, we are only working with block 0 and block 1. Let me explain each of them. Block 0 means residential or business IP, i.e., safe IP or clean IP. Block 1 means non residential IP, VPN, hosting provider, proxy, etc. I generally recommend people to use risk level 1. It provides the best balance between stopping malicious users and avoiding false positives. Excellent! In the PHP integration section, there is a snippet that you can use. It's a class that, based on the IP of your site's client, sends a curl command from your server to the IP Hub API and determines the block status for you. 
By default, this ready-made code has a block with a value of 1, which I explained earlier. And here, there are two other pieces of code that demonstrate how to use this class. As we continue with the video, I plan to develop all of them further to reach a better version and also add new functions to them. Now, let's create the IP Hub class. But before that, I want to show you my mock-up website. Assume this is my website and I want to implement the capability to block suspicious clients and VPN users for it. I have designed two messages, one to be displayed for users who are blocked, and the other is actually my main site for users who are free and do not use a VPN. Very well, let's create the class. This is my website, which contains some HTML and CSS, and I want to implement the capabilities of IP Hub on it. First, I'll explain this class to you, and then I'll proceed to enhance it. This class has a function named isBadIP that, with the IP and API key parameters, determines the status of this user. I'm referring to the three block statuses that I explained earlier, 0, 1, and 2. As a result, this function blocks access for clients with a block status of 1. Now, I want to develop this function into a better version. Let's start coding. I execute the curl session, decode the JSON response, and store it in the $CE variable. I want to ensure that the response is correct, so I check if the block property is set in the response and store its value in the dollar $block variable. In this step, I check if the block property is not set in the response and set the HTTP status to 503 service unavailable. Finally, I output a styled error message and terminate the script. I've decided to display this message, the API limit has been exceeded or is currently unavailable, you can choose to display your own message or not display anything at all. The new code I've written in this section ensures that my desired error is displayed. In fact, with the logic I've applied, the site is not usable without the API at all, and I've forced the use of the API for users. At this stage, I intend to write a new function that will come into the program as a JSON API and return and display the client's IP information. This function is named getIPInfo.
First, I execute the curl session and store the response. I check if the response is false, then throw an exception. I decode the JSON response. I check if there is an error in decoding, then throw an exception. Finally, I return the decoded response. So, in general, the function I've written comes and acts as a new API using the IP Hub server itself, and returns the viewer's IP information to itself. So far, we have two functions named isBadIP and getIPInfo, both of which I have explained to you. It's time to test these functions on our hypothetical website. I'm going to test the isBadIP function first. Let's go! I'm taking a portion of the code from the IP Hub documentation and developing it as I wish. Currently, we can't use this global variable, dollar underscore server, remote underscore ADDR, which is related to the server and returns the client's IP, because we are in a local host environment. In fact, this variable returns our server's IP to us. I will definitely test this program on a real server later in the video, where we will use this variable. So, if you're working in a local host environment, you'll need to manually enter an IP for testing the program. At this stage, I'm defining a variable to hold the API key, currently as a placeholder text. So, based on the points I mentioned, I'm defining a real residential or safe IP in this section, which IP Hub has no problem with and does not block.
I'm defining a variable named access state so that I can perform my desired operation based on the status in different sections of my website. I use a try-catch block to handle exceptions. I call the isBadIP method of the IP Hub class to check if the IP is bad. Based on the IP hub response, if the IP is bad, I set the access state to blocked. In the following part of the video right here, I add some access denied examples, but I'll skip it for now. Otherwise, for safe IPs, I set the access state to granted. In the last part, if an exception occurs, I set block to false. So, this is the action we perform for safe and unsafe IPs. Now, using the access state variable, I want to define some actions for my website. As I showed you, I had considered two message states for my website. At this stage, I want to conditionally display them, one for suspicious and blocked clients, and one for regular clients. Also, at the end of the message text, I show the blocked clients their own IP. I also want to make visual changes, so I add conditional CSS codes that apply a grayscale filter to the background image for blocked clients. Great.
Now it's time to test the program and see what happens. Okay, the occurrence of this message is normal because I have not yet defined the API key. This message is the one I had defined in the IP Hub class and occurs when a successful connection with the API is not established or a correct response from the API is not received for any reason. Now, let's go to the IP Hub panel, copy the API key, and place it in the related variable. Excellent, as you can see, my website has displayed a self-explanatory success message to the viewer. This is because I have used a safe IP. Now, let's use a server IP and check how our website interacts with that IP. Very good, as you can see. My website has returned an error message to the viewer, which also includes their IP address. You can design and display your own custom error message, or even block clients in other ways, which I will show you a few examples of later. It's good to know that IP Hub also supports IPv6. Let me test a few examples of IPv6 for you. Now, I'm going to test a safe IPv6 IP example. As a note, the IP value can only be of type IPv4 or IPv6, or a domain. Otherwise, we will encounter the error message that I have designed. Based on the logic that I have added to this part of the code, also, if the API key is not correct, we will face the same error. You can download my source code from GitHub and implement your own logic. Now, let's return to the section I had previously prepared. In this step, I want to show you several access denied methods specifically for users who get blocked. In the first case, I block the client by sending a 403 forbidden header and terminating script execution. As you can see, in this example, the blocked user encounters a native 403 forbidden browser error.
The second case is a redirect for blocked clients. I redirect users to a specified domain and terminate script execution. In this example, I redirect users to the Google website. As you can see, in the second example, the blocked user is automatically redirected to Google. Now, let's test this with a safe IP. Very good, this works excellently. In the third case, I display an error message and provide IP information for blocked requests. I intend to display a styled error message. Let's go and check this out. Apparently, everything seems fine, but I need to add several HTML BR tags. All right, now this is perfect. I have placed the client IP address at the end of the error message text. Okay, this is one of several methods for displaying errors to blocked users. So far, I have thoroughly reviewed and tested this bad IP function for you. Now it's time to move on to testing the getIPInfo function, which I have defined to display IP information to the client. This function essentially plays the role of an IP lookup JSON API. Well, in the first step, I define a trycatch block to handle exceptions. Then, I call the getIPInfo method of the IPHub class to get information about the IP. In this step, I set the content type of the HTTP response to application slash JSON. And finally, I encode the IP information as JSON and output it, then terminate the script. In this line of code, I check if an exception occurs and output the error message.
Very well, this is how to use a function that I wrote, or better to say, the getIPInfo function. Now, let's go and check the result. That's great! As you can see, the program returns and displays the viewer's IP information in JSON format. I have used JSON underscore pretty underscore print in the JSON underscore encode function. JSON pretty print is a constant in PHP used as an option in the JSON encode function. When you pass JSON pretty print as a parameter to JSON encode, it formats the output JSON string with white space to make it more readable. If I remove this parameter, the JSON response will be displayed in a single line or unformatted. I use a Chrome extension called JSON Formatter, which makes JSON easy to read and automatically formats JSON for you. If you work with JSON frequently, I recommend installing it for your convenience. Very well, now I am testing different IPs and the program is displaying the IP information well for us. In this section, there is also validation for the standard format of various IPs, domains, and API keys, and the IP Hub API returns the relevant error to you. Okay. So far, we have thoroughly reviewed and tested two functions in detail. Now, I want to show you the request limit in the IP Hub panel. The free subscription supports a thousand requests per day. As I mentioned before, this global server variable is not used in local hosting environment. It's time to test it on a real server. This variable actually returns the client's IP. As the final step of this video, I want to test and review this program for you on a live server environment. Very well, let's test the script on a live server. I have placed the files on the server. Here, we can comfortably use the remote underscore ADDR variable from the global server. Let's replace our API key. Okay, so far everything is working correctly. Now, I want to use a VPN and see my website's reaction to it. Great, my website blocked me because it detected that I was using a VPN.
Now, I am testing with another country. Very well. In this step, I want to sequentially test the custom errors that I have previously designed for you, the access denied errors. All cases are working correctly. And in the final step, I want to test the function and JSON API mode for you. Excellent, as IP Hub states, the country parameter is provided as a courtesy and may not represent the actual country of the IP address. So, in this video, we learned how to create and implement a feature on a PHP server that identifies malicious clients using VPNs, proxies, and servers, utilizing the IP Hub API. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on notifications. I'd also love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I hope it helps. Don't try to stop me now